All right, uh, so next we're gonna talk about our implementation at Demco. So we started what, a couple of years back. Uh, we, uh, so it's a smaller size manufacturing unit compared to what we just, we were just talking about with CNH. But I think the problems are, are similar. So we wanted to look at assembly line optimization. We wanted to look at PFEP, work instruction, bomb management, all of the same features. Um, and so we started on a line uh, at the Spencer plant, which is a side dump truck, which is similar to the product that we were doing at CNH. And so, uh, and, and you know, and we can, we'll just walk through that process till now. So JC, uh, he was, what, right out of college when I met you at the- uh, Couple Demco, of years. Couple yeah. of years, right. Yeah. And uh, so he's been working with the implementation process. We have Mark and Jim as well. Uh, but yeah, JC, I'll let you take over. Yeah, so yeah, like Bonda said, I'm JC Forsman. So um, I started working at Demco uh, shortly after they made the decision to um, really start testing the capabilities and uh, limitations of what Pro Planner could offer uh, both of our facilities. So um, yeah, so I guess just to tell you a little bit about Demco, uh, we we're founded by Robert Deathmers, which is actually my great grandfather. And uh, so a brief background of our company uh, started in the 70s, started out with some sprayers, um, moving into, you know, the RV line, trailer component line, and then uh, eventually into the semi-trailer line on the Spencer facility. So just for some of our, our product lines, we do a lot in the egg equipment side, um, probably more well known in the Midwest region for our grain carts and our grain wagons. So um, but there's just some examples of a head trailer um, and then also sprayers and our side quest tanks as well. RV products, I'll try and go through this a little quickly. Um, really known for our car caddies. Um, and that's where, you know, we do a lot of contract work for Penske and some other companies where, you know, that provides some difficulties in the manufacturing world as well, where it's hot and then cold. So, um, yeah, and then we have our supplemental braking system, our towing capabilities that kind of wraps up the RV side and then trailer components. This is more of our um, business to business side of things. So um, probably less known, but a, a really big portion of our business is the trailer component side of things. So um, yeah, selling couplers, actuators, um, tongues, things of that nature, and then semi-trailers lastly. So this is where um, that was one of our acquisitions was in the Maurer manufacturing world. So that's our Spencer facility now. Um, getting into the steel grain trailers, liquid tenders, side dumps, and that's where our pilot process kind of began with Pro Planner. So um, two locations, one in Spencer, one in Boyden, Iowa. Um, so just wanted to touch through some of the manufacturing complexities with uh, each facility. So um, like I said, we acquired Spencer, so it's uh, a little different than the Boyden location. So the Boyden location, um, some of the manufacturing compl complexities is that we have for one product line, 800 whole good numbers in a trailer component line in itself. So um, high product mix, and then they're also using shared resources. So that funnel, you know, you have, you've got a lot of different products that all have to get funneled through one fabrication department. So where do you allocate that time? Where do you allocate your resources in order to get everything through that facility or that department? Um, the seasonal side. So I touched on that with the one-way rental. Um, that's contract work from January to June. So, you know, when we allocate a lot of our people to get that contract, contract work done, and then what do we have them do from you know, June to December, where do we move those people around? How do we organize our, you know, areas in our plants? So that's some of the complexities there. Um, yeah, as far as percent of assembly versus manufacturing, we still manufacture a large majority of our parts, but we are about 40% assembly, 60% manufacturing in the blade location. And we have two product lines that are using single unit configured. And then 15 product lines that are using more of the batch building concept for the Boyden location. Spencer location, um, eight product lines. And then for really one of the bigger complexities that we have is the configurability. So you guys touched on that in some of your previous presentations as well. 
is, uh, you know, for the side dump product line, we have eight, 181 configurability options on those trailers. So trying to figure out, you know, hey, you have one product going through the plant, the next product following it, well, that can look very different. And what options go on that um, and how to build that trailer, you know, trying to make sure that uh, you're building it correctly. That's one of the complexities there. So seasonal, um, we really haven't seen a lot of that. I mean, with the market today, I mean, the demand is so high that uh, we don't really see that seasonal influx right now, but it is real. And uh, I'm sure we'll be getting into that at some point in the future too. But uh, this is more, I mean, 30% assembly, more manufacturing in the Spencer location. And then this location actually uses more of the single unit configured and then limited in our batch building, but it is present in this facility as well. So why Pro Planner? Um, some of the, or really one of the main reasons that we went with Pro Planner was we wanted manageable work instructions. So um, that was something that we were struggling with was, you know, we had the Word documents out on the floor telling you how to do things. But like you guys were saying earlier, the guy who's been there for 20 years knows how to build that product best. So how do you capture that tribal knowledge? And I mean, that's what our speak is anyways, is tribal knowledge. So they know how to build the product. How do we get it so they can train the, the next guy that comes in and capture that knowledge so that way we're not taking a step backwards when we have that turnover. Um, and then yeah, documenting current state, um, current versus future state. Whenever we're making a change, we're really looking at, okay, we wanna know where we're coming from before we make a change. So that way we know if it truly was an improvement. So um, that's where one of the other big uh, features of Pro Planner is, is if we have those work instructions all documented, we know what our current state is before we start making changes. Um, and then I'll touch on some of the other areas uh, as we go through the slides, but um, really uh, those are some of the big key reasons why we chose to start looking into Pro Planner. So our, uh, I call it previous slash current state because we are very early in our process with Pro Planner. So um, really we had missing work instructions, Word documents floating around on the work instruction side. We had Excel time studies. So where there wasn't necessarily a central location for those or for that information. So if you wanted to look back and find a time study, well, which folder is it in? which engineer ran that time study? Is it in his current user folder or a central location? Those are some of the, um, I guess, issues that we were looking at resolving. Um, line balancing, again, Excel, uh, and then live digital tracking for part consumption and units. That was really a manual process and we were looking to move towards a digital process. Um, and then, yeah, we didn't have a digital quality network that was papers that were passed through the plant with a shop floor packet. So um, really just trying to move more digital, trying to get more current. That was, uh, that's our current state. And then, so I'll take you through, we were in a pilot process through our Spencer plant. I won't spend a lot of time because you guys have really seen a lot of this, but um, just to show you how far we took it in our pilot process, we went through the work instruction side, um, did something similar to what you guys did is we were using our manuals and our Word documents that were already created, trying to use that for our SLP image side of things, and then also provide that detail on the steps. So providing, hey, we want it to this torque, we want you to use this tool, and these are your parts. So this is what we're consuming at this step. So that shows the parts, that shows the tools. Um, and then time studies, we wanted to test this theory out as well. You know, can we have a central location for all of our time studies? Um, we got into doing the non-value added, value added, semi-value added studies, um, really just looking into what those capabilities were as well. We um, mapped our precedence diagram in order to get into some line balancing scenarios. So um, this was a situation where we had four workers in an assembly line and uh, after we got done timing everything and mapping all the work instructions, we saw that we were really overworking one worker. He was taking a majority of um, that work. So we rebalanced that line and actually were able to reduce 
the size of that department transfer the labor where it actually needed to be and our tack time was the same so that was just you know one positive that came out of the pilot as well so got into the consumption side of things and then quality of documents this was where we were trying to come up with a way where we weren't having to file these word documents or these pieces of paper that were getting transferred uh, between all the different departments so started testing the quality document side of things and uh one of the big things that came out is we were trying to eliminate what we call pencil whipping of a quality document you know did you actually do that quality check or were you just signing off you know hey this is the 10th unit i built today yes i did it yes i did it i know what i'm doing um can we get into the you know hey the dc torque tool side of things how can we implement that into the quality document side of things as well. So virtual build, this is something that we have been experimenting a little bit with Sanjay and he's gonna be giving a presentation on that later on today as well. But um, we're really, um, at least I'm a visual learner. So, you know, if I see a bunch of words up there on how to build something, I'm gonna look for pictures. And so this is something that we see moving forward as a very good tool on, hey, how can we, assemble a pitch, for instance, that's being shown up here on the screen. So um, really see a benefit moving forward on, you know, as we're working through showing people, hey, this is what it should look like in this step. So yeah, that kind of through the pilot process that crossed off a lot off of our list on, you know, hey, testing the capabilities on what ProPlanner can offer us for the future. Um, and then moving forward into um, more of what CNH just discussed was uh, the PFEP, the you know the back end things or the back end stuff. So that's where we are currently at is the implementation side of things, testing how we connect our MRP or our ERP with this software. So this is where we're getting more into. So we found it, you know. Developing the work instructions, we had the material that was more of just implementing it into the software and learning how to use the line balancing, you know, that's just more of learning the tool. Um, but this is where a lot of the hurdles during our implementation is happening is how do we connect two softwares? How do we get what MRP wants to see versus what we're wanting to see on the pro planner side of things and how do we make them mesh together? So um, this is where we get into the two different styles of the way we of the way that we manufacture batch building and single unit configures, um, developing pro planner so that it works well with both of those different manufacturing styles. So um, right now we we do build stock and with our current ERP system that does not have a customer order through production. So um, having a customer order versus a customer order on the single unit configured, how do we mesh those two to work when we're looking for a customer order on one side and not on the other side. And uh, forecasted demand versus made to a customer order on the single or single unit configured side too. You know, how do we work on the scheduling side of things? Um, you know, that provides some difficulties there as well. And then what we call a flattened bomb on the bat on the batch build side versus a structured bomb on the single unit configured side. Um, ERP doesn't always care about the bolts and the nuts and, you know, the little pieces that go into a large assembly. So we're trying to figure out, you know, how to balance those two um, and how to provide the right information back to our ERP system when it maybe doesn't care about all the smaller pieces that go into that assembly. And uh, yeah, single shop orders and then also multiple shop orders with suffixes. So how do we tie all of those shop orders that have, you know, 30 different options in it? How do we tie that back to a single unit in the shop floor viewer application? Um, and then, yeah, E-bomb and M-bomb inconsistencies. So since we've flattened it down because our ERP system may not care about the nuts and bolts and things like that, um, well, that means the two bombs look different. If we wanna look at the virtual build side of things and we wanna show that nut and bolt getting assembled into our, you know, our hitch that was shown, um, how do we overcome some of those obstacles? And uh, then yeah, CAD files, that's what I was just talking about, not containing 
you know, all the assembled parts. So um, versus on the single unit configured side, we show all of those parts. So the difference, really what I'm trying to come across here is how we have two different sides of the way that we manufacture. How can we make both of those gel and work together in Pro Planner um, with our current way that we do business in our ERP? So that's really what I had is, you know, we're new to Pro Planner. We're working through it. Um, working with Pro Planner has been, you know, great because they're always there. They're a phone call away. They're there to help you, you know, work through your complications. So that's been very nice. So I, you know, commend Pro Planner for that aspect of it. And uh, yeah, so if you guys have any questions for how our implementation pilot process has gone, I'm open for that too. So. How long have you been using? So we started about a year and a half ago looking into it. And what I can say is we've had probably two people really diving into it rather than, you know, throwing a whole team at it to start, we ran the pilot process with two people. So that was learning the software, um, starting to implement it into one product line. So yeah, about a year and a half. And that's where we're at currently is we're looking at the, you know, logistics side of things, feed fed, that type of stuff now. Is it cultural pushback? Um, yeah, so similar to what you guys had had as well was, you know, hey, why do I need to have a tablet here showing me how to build this? Because I've been building this for <clears throat> 5, 10, 15 years. So, um, but as we've gone out there and, you know, talked through the why aspect of it, that's really helped us, you know, move forward in that progression is, hey, we're not here to, you know, catch you doing something wrong. This is to help us understand what you guys do on a daily basis. So, so pretty favorable, pretty positive. Yeah, for the most part so far. You know, we haven't rolled this out um, immensely out on the floor yet, but in our in our beta and our pilot testing areas, it's gone over pretty well. So. <laughs> Other questions from the group here, names? How about the folks online? Do we have questions from any of the folks online? You just go and unmute yourself and ask a question. Especially some of those of you who are new to the process or looking to get new into what it's like to make these conversions. Quiet online audience. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, two people diving in. Yep. An engineer, materials who are. Who are yeah, so um, it was myself and then actually someone from that we hired to be on location from Pro Planner. So, and you know, him being new on at Pro Planner as well, diving in and learning the process as well. But that really helped us, I think, especially on the implementation side of things, because he had a direct link back to Pro Planner. So, you know, if we had a question and we needed something, you know, now as far as, hey, how do we do this? He was able to get those answers resolved rather quickly. So, it really helped us during our pilot process having him on site. So, We, we have great partnerships with uh, several of the other engineering service firms. I know we have Dave here from Gafari who will be presenting soon. Uh, I know we have the, a lot of people here from CareSoft. We have some people here from Prolog that are online from Italy. So, um, you know, we have some really great partner relationships. And I want to mention that as we work here with Demco, um, we have those same lines. I mean, Dave has my personal phone number. He can call me on a Saturday afternoon if he has a problem, right? I mean, that, that's the kind of service that we really want to be in and, and especially to our partners, right? Who are supporting our customers, they have that. We did open a, also an office in India from with our relationship with Carisoft and so they're providing that other 12 hours of support. So I'm not saying we're full 24, we're like that that uh, tow truck company that says 23 and a half hours of, uh, of service, but we, we try to be as responsible as we can. But thank you a lot, Jason, yeah. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thanks again. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.